Hey guys, we are live. I'm Michelle Sellers, Cascadia Dog Training in North Vancouver. It is time for our weekly Q and A. Um, yeah, first thing I want to do is I have made some notes here. I since my last Q and A uh, last week, I've had a bunch of questions emailed to me. Um, I guess it kind of all spurred from this. So people that found me um, on Facebook and people, sorry, people who found me on Facebook from doing this last week. So that's really awesome. I want to help as many as you guys as I can. I just want to get on, on my phone. There we go. Just so I can see comments and stuff coming up. Awesome. Okay. I am going to, hello, Morgan. Actually, I, let's, do you have a question? You had emailed me saying that you had a question. Um, Morgan is amazing. If you don't mind, Mo, I'm going to share a little bit of your story. She's a friend of mine up in Penticton. Um, and she, you know, got a hold of me one day out of the blue and said that she didn't know what to do with her dog lady. Um, she was actually asking me if I knew how to rehome her. And I said, you know what? I said, I've got um, a program that we can do via Skype. And we did it and we did foundation training. And not only was she super successful with Lady, this crazy lady, well, huh, the dog's name is Lady too, but Crazy Morgan went out and adopted a Mastiff as well and Dixie. And they are both doing fabulous. So Morgan, if you have your question, go right ahead, honey. I know that you had something. Otherwise, it doesn't look like you're typing anything right now. Okay, I'm going to go to my notes and let me see here. Okay, so Michaela, um, last week she had a problem with Maverick with the food. Um, and she's back now from Williams Lake and she got a hold of me because she had this question. Um, I took Maverick out for an off leash walk the other week at Inter River Park. Just me and him, and he was really good. Stayed with me no matter what. No issues with other dogs. Pretty much near perfect. Michaela, that's awesome. That is huge. His recall was really hard to work. He's a tricky guy. High energy shepherd. Uh, then a few days later, I took Maverick to the same park with my mom. And as you know, she's really nervous walking Maverick anywhere in public because he's been attacked so many times. Uh, Maverick has a lot of leash reactivity that we kind of had to overcome with him. Um, where am I here? I barely even opened the truck door and Maverick bolted. Ugh, and I had to use 100 on the e-collar to even get his attention to come back. It was so frustrating. What can we do so this doesn't happen again? Oh, Michaela, yes, that is incredibly frustrating. Um, Maverick is a super high energy dog, okay? He's a shepherd. He's drivey, he's got prey, and he is very in tune with everybody's emotions around him. Okay, that's something that we know for sure about Maverick, um, and you especially know living with him. Now, with your mom, this happens with a lot of humans. I understand that we react in a certain way based on what's happened in the past. But what we have to do, and maybe I'll come over and do a session with your mom. I don't know. What we have to do, as hard as it is, we have to forget that. And I know that you know this, but it's your mom. And the only difference here from when you took him out and from when your mom took him out is that your mom was there. And I've seen your mom with Maverick. She is super tense, super nervous, and she's really got to work on that or else – Maverick's just going to go berserk every time that he's out with her. He doesn't know why she's nervous. He doesn't know that it has to do with other dogs and that she's scared of him getting attacked. He's feeding off that. Okay. So we need your mom to move slow. We need your mom to do some breathing exercises. So I want you guys, I want you to practice this again, actually. And I want both of you guys to get out of the truck. Both of you make sure you're calm. And before you let Maverick out, I want you to do some threshold exercises with him like we practiced at your front door. I want you to do those threshold exercises with him getting out of the truck. So he does not even think about coming out till he is calm and polite. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, I also I made some notes on this. I, I, I want your mom to calm down. And unfortunately, what it's going to take is just like we condition a dog to be able to be around other dogs or to be around people that they're scared of. It's going to take exposure for your mom. It's going to take repeated times of kind of nothing happening, if you will, over and over again before she's able to relax. But I'd be more than happy to come and do a session with the two of you. That is the perk of our advanced training program with the lifetime aftercare. So I'm going to deke off of that question for just a moment. Okay, Morgan. When my dogs are free to roam the house and the kids sneak into the fridge, lady snatches the food right out from their hands. If food is left anywhere, she'll be the first to jump on the tables to get at it. Okay, Morgan. So what we need to do, I think lady, she's still she's still young, right? So is she a year yet? I feel like she's a year or just over a year. Um, less roaming. Okay, so maybe for the next, let's say, two weeks, what I really want to do with Lady is 50% of the time that you're home, she's going to be in her crate. 25% of the time that you're home, she's going to be in command. So in a down, in a sit, on place, and 25% of that is free. Now, how do you tackle this food issue when she's in, in um, uh, on free time? <sighs> what I really want you to do is keep her leash on for one keep her leash and prong on in the house all the time um and i want you to not take the food away from her because then it becomes a game and she's naturally just going to follow it right so we take it away the dog follows it what i want you to do is put your food on the table have the leash and prong on lady and i want you to make it her decision that she's going to leave it alone that's really important. That's the game changer that you're gonna have with Lady. So you're gonna put it on, and the second that she goes towards any food, you're gonna give an interruption on the leash. You're going to um, just a quick little pop and then give her direction. You can say down. You can, um, if it's enough of an interruption, she's gonna back away. And you do this enough times, and you just say no, or you can say out. If you want, that's how we train Sam is we just kind of send out and he has to leave the area. Um, so step one, you're going to give an interruption. She goes near the food. Again, don't remove the food. Then you're making it, you know, something for her to go get after. Um, with the food in the kid's hands, let's leave that for just a sec. Let's work on one that's a little bit easier because the girls are young. They're carrying it around. There's movement now associated with the food. I talk about this all the time. Dogs are attracted to movement, okay? Um, I know that it is food, so it has a smell as well, but when it's moving around in the hands of a toddler, it's a little more enticing, okay? So work with the food on, her on the table, give her an interruption for going near it, then give her direction for what you would like her to do instead. And, hi Sandra, hi Jen. Uh, and then once you get that good and solid, what I want you to actually do is have the food there and then you can give the out command and lead her away from where she is. And once she's away from the food, give her a high value treat reward or use her daily food. OK, so step one, interrupt any nosing towards the food on the table. Once that's good and solid. Step two, I want you to lead her away using her leash and give her food reward when she's out, out of the way. Um, and 50, 25, 25, so 50% of the time she's in her crate when you're home, 25% of the time she's in command, place, down, sit, whatever you wanna do. Um, that's including the walk, I forgot to mention that. And then the other 25% of the time is free time, and you can use this training kind of in her structure or in her free time, it doesn't really matter. Okay, sweet, so, what did I want to get to next here? All right, so I got an email from a woman named Stacy. Now, Stacy, you were going to join. If you can't make it, that's totally fine. I will tag you in this post. Um, and then you'll have access to the answer 
to your question. So she said, hi there, I've got a situation that I'm not sure if I'm overreacting to. I've got two dogs and a four-year-old. Oh man, you have your hands full. I'm always watching to make sure the interactions are okay, but things happen and it's hard to always be reminding our daughter to be calm around the dogs. I agree, especially four-year-old. They kind of do what they do, right? Um, the one dog, Piper, that I'm worried about is a reactive Frenchie Boston Cross that's been very good with her overall. But tonight when we got home, my daughter was running up the driveway and it was dark and Piper got spooked and ran at her barking. All that stopped her from getting to our, our daughter was her leash because it didn't appear that she was going to back down and she didn't seem to recognize our daughter at that moment. Um, needless to say, it really scared me. She and our other dog come to work with me too and she's been progressively getting worse about customers coming in. All right. Okay, I'm um, barking at them, etc. My biggest concern is if I should be worried around our daughter and if there's anything we can do to figure out the right reactivity. Um, to answer your first question, uh, should you be concerned? I would, I would lean towards saying yes. Um, I'm curious kind of how long this has been going on, how quickly it's been progressing. Um, it's worrisome. Because like you said, the only thing holding her back was the leash, even after she recognized that it was your daughter. Uh, so sometimes, unfortunately, these things just kind of tend to snowball and um, can get worse and worse over time. Did you say how old Piper is? No, not that I can see. Um, I see a lot of this behavior start to come out in a dog kind of one and a half to three years old when the dog really kind of comes into itself and has decided that all that stuff in the year previous, it's either worth worrying about or it's not worth worrying about. And it sounds to me like something may or may not have happened between Piper and your daughter um, that really spooked Piper and the people coming into the store. So all your issues kind of stem around people. So you know kids, right? You have a daughter. They're unpredictable for the most part, emotionally. Right. So one minute they're laughing, they're having a great time. And the next minute they throw themselves on the floor. They're having a fit. They're crying. and We're all going, what the heck? Right. Like you were fine two seconds ago. What's going on? Right. So you think it's confusing for us? Well, now think about your dogs. Right. So, you know, reactivity towards children is not uncommon. Um, kids walk funny. They sound funny. Now, I know that Piper's grown up around your daughter, but kids change a lot too, and dogs don't necessarily do well with change. So that could be a factor as well. Um, it is fixable. Good news. Yes, uh, reactivity around your daughter is definitely fixable. Um, I believe that you live in the Vancouver area. If you do, you can fill out our contact form, CascadiaDogTraining.com, and there's the orange button at the top there to fill out, or to get you to the contact page to fill out. We can have a consult and just kind of talk about what's going on. I can kind of see the dog interacting and, and stuff like that. Um, but until then, um, I've got a couple suggestions that I wrote down. I made notes on this one too. So for the next week. I'm going to recommend, um, and again, this kind of depends on how Piper is with your daughter in everyday situations and in the house. But if things are generally calm, let me say that first, I'm going to have the only way that Piper eats be from your daughter, you know, so that Piper is, you know, literally associating your daughter with life itself. And I know that sounds crazy, but, um, and she might not, Piper might not eat at first because she's uncomfortable. I don't want your daughter to pet Piper, not talk to her. I know she's a four year old, it's really hard, but if we can just get this part of it, even her just holding the food bowl right there or having the food bowl beside her while she's watching uh, TV or cartoons or whatever it is, you know, if it was someone older, I'd say directly hand feed, but with your daughter, it's up to you. It depends, you know, what you think that everybody's capable of. But I want Piper to associate your daughter with the food. And again, she might not eat a meal or two. She won't starve herself. She's an animal. She will eat. Um, 
and we really kind of want that that positive association with your daughter um the second thing that i really wanted to mention it sounds like piper's got a lot of issues around strangers don't let people pet your dog okay it's an invasion of personal space and not every dog likes to be pet we live in this society where people think that they are being rude if they don't engage with our dogs and unfortunately not every dog likes that um my mentor actually i heard him use this analogy and i really loved it and i tell it to my clients as well because it makes it a little bit easier to kind of grasp what's going on but uh stacy so imagine that you or i are going into superstore and all of a sudden you know we walk in we're doing our grocery shopping we're minding our own business and this giant dude comes up out of nowhere and kisses us on the lips okay yikes huge invasion of privacy so that's kind of what it's like for your dog right if your dog doesn't want to be pet next thing you know if that happens every time we go into superstore we're gonna go in there swinging right unless we go in there with a group of bodyguards that's what you got to be for your dog. You got to be that bodyguard. You have to advocate for Piper and just be like, mm, you know what? She's not comfortable. Maybe you can keep her in a crate or on a tie back on a bed because what's happened, it sounds like, is that she has made this association possibly with people coming into work wanting to pet her and now she's just being proactive, right? If I get at you first, you're not going to come and try and invade my personal space. So it sounds to me like that's what's going on. Um, I hope that helped again, uh, Cascadia dog training.com. If you want to get in touch with us, if you are in Vancouver, I would love to help you. Um, and I love working with kids and dogs. It's one of the more rewarding things that we do. Let me check and see if any Bonnie, the no petting thing is hard for me, but it has improved things for my reactive boxer. Absolutely. Hi, Bonnie. Welcome on. I'm so happy to see you. I am stoked for our phone consult on Thursday. Um, yeah, affection can be very confusing for dogs, right? Um, what was the analogy that I gave someone last night? Oh, so if we have an imbalance of discipline and affection we've we've kind of got this confusing point for the dog right so imagine being a kid and you know we're told to just sit there or go to our room and you know don't think of it necessarily as the dog in trouble but say we're a kid and we're in trouble we're told to go to our room that's structure right so we're told to go to our room and next thing you know mom or dad whoever sent us there is bringing us a bowl of ice cream I mean, it's like which is it right so so often for people and bonnie i'm talking to you in particular right here um and i know that you do have a lot of structure for ellie but there's an imbalance right so for so long we've had the heavy end of affection and the light end of boundaries and rules so now we need to turn the tables and give way more boundaries and rules that we have affection before we can really find that balance again. So I hope that makes sense. Cool. My next one, I have notes on. Oh yes. So I got an email from a gentleman named Mark. How do I potty train our new puppy? It is so frustrating, all in caps. Oh, Mark, you, my dear, have months of frustration ahead of you puppies are so cute but they are so much work um actually got two on the go with clients right now um and the best advice i can give you number one thing for a puppy use a crate crate train okay get that puppy comfortable in their crate um, the way that you're going to do that is you are going to only feed the puppy in the crate leave the door open don't even close the door for like the first two days put the food at the back puppy goes in eats they can come and go as they please before you know it puppy's going to be going in there hang out chew a toy sleep whatever that usually only takes a couple days maybe two three in the meantime use pee pads but then what i want you to do when the puppy's used to their crate 
is you're going to have to commit a couple of days to this. So maybe do it on a Saturday, Sunday. This could be really good timing. What day is it today? Tuesday. Yeah, hopefully by Saturday, Sunday, we can have uh, your puppy really comfortable in the crate. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to go on a strict schedule and you're actually going to set a timer. Uh, it can be really helpful. You're going to go half an hour in the crate, leash on, out of the crate, directly outside. If the puppy pees, awesome. Come back in, half an hour of playtime, free time, whatever you want. Puppies have really small bladders and they don't have the muscle development to really kind of hold things for a long time. So chances are they're going to have to go again in an hour, right? Every dog is different. Um, but potty training, the more that you can try this and the more that um, you repeat and kind of uh, drill in, if you will, that, you know, you go to the bathroom outside, the better it'll be. So if they go to the bathroom, bring them back in, have some playtime. And that's great, too, because then playtime is exciting. Puppy won't pee all over the place while you're playing. Um, then back in the crate for half an hour. So that's number one. That's if they pee. If they do not pee. It's the same thing in the beginning, half an hour in the crate. Then what you're going to do is outside to pee, give them maybe two, three minutes. If they don't pee, back in the crate for half an hour. Half an hour is up, outside to pee. And you repeat that until the dog pees outside. Okay. Uh, I hope that helps. Um, tune in next week if you're around. Uh, if you're in Vancouver, like I was telling um, Stacy. We do have puppy training. It is not advertised on the website. I should probably get that up there. But yeah, we do have a puppy training package. We'll address everything from frustrating potty training and walking politely on a leash, some basic obedience, you know, sits and downs, um, everything crate. I think I said that already. And uh, how to handle those nasty, pesky behaviors like chewing and possibly digging. Some puppies dig very young. Uh, jumping up, that's a big one. I currently have a lab that I'm working on who body slams the cupboards when there's food involved. So um, there is no puppy too crazy. Fill out the contact form, we'll be in touch. And let me see. So this one's from Christine. I got an email. She, um, we just finished up with her. She's got two boxers who are extremely anxious. So we did a lot of work having them be okay on their own at home um, while she is home. So having them, excuse me, sorry, a little under the weather tonight. Um, my voice is starting to go. Just one sec. Okay, so they're highly anxious. They follow her everywhere. And when she leaves to go anywhere, um, the dogs pace. Wow, this is really weird. It's like all of a sudden. Um, so most of our program was centered around Christine having the dogs be on place or in the crate or in a down, whatever, away from her while she's at home so that it doesn't make it such a big deal when she leaves later, right? So she said alan has incessant licking of anything and everything especially in the morning and after meals any hints on how to stop that i distract him for a bit but then he just goes into autopilot okay so licking anything and everything i'm assuming that you mean himself and like inanimate objects the bed and whatnot uh if it's himself i want you to monitor and see if it's always the same spot um or if he's got hot spots i'm I'm wondering, I know he's anxious, but um, I'm wondering if maybe there's a skin issue or a food allergy, uh, best to get that checked at the vet, uh, just to rule that out. And the inanimate object licking, it sounds like Alan is just kind of getting caught in this cycle of um, this almost hypnotic state with the licking. And if that's the case, uh, it definitely can be caused from anxiety. So you need to find a way to interrupt that. Um, at this point, you should still have a uh, collar and leash on in the house. We just finished up a week ago. So have collar and leash on. You can give it a leash interruption, but then we need direction. So if you just put them in a down on the bed, 
I think what's going to happen is that he is just going to go back to it. So I want you to give him an interruption with the leash, and then I want you to walk him around really slow. I want you to slow his brain down, right? We talked about this. Dogs with anxiety, they live with their resting level up here. That's what's causing all this to go over and over and over for him. We got to bring that down. Okay, if we can bring that down, um, chances are he can snap out of it a little bit easier. So I know it's not ideal, but leash and collar on, interruption, walk him around really, really slow. Now, from what I understand, you guys got rid of the crates. Um, as you know, I'm a big fan of crates for dogs, especially anxious dogs. Now, I know it sounds counterintuitive, but as I have explained to Christine, um, dogs are the opposite of us when it comes to space, right? So us humans, we think of closing in the space and we actually get really anxious, right? Like, oh, I don't know. Um, there's not a lot of room to move around in here, but that's exactly why it works for dogs, okay? So when you close in the space that a dog has to roam or even to see around them, there's less to worry about, right? So I recommend the wire crates um, because that way you can put a towel over it and close in their space even more if you wish. Um, I've been talking about it lately. It worked really well for Sam on Halloween. He decided to go in his crate when he heard the fireworks. I put the towel over. He was snug as a bug in a rug. All right. Well, in a crate. But anyways, um, I want to look here and make sure that we don't. Uh, Shay, Will. Hey, guys. Um, so, yeah. Now, I know you, you don't have the crates anymore. I want you to find a way, um, baby gates, anything like that that you can close in his area with. Oh, you know what's really good is uh, the puppy play pens, right? So they're pugs, they're not puppies, but um, they're small so it'll work and it's the gated, it's like an octagon or you know, some round-ish shape, but it's the same wire material for the crates. Um, and that'll just close in his area a little bit. You can even make them smaller by kind of like pinching in part of the side, close in his space so he doesn't have enough to worry about. Let's see if that helps and then touch back uh, with me later, okay? Good luck. Now, Shay, I didn't see when you joined, but I had a question about, uh, that I answered about puppy potty training. So. Head back there. Um, I don't even remember what minute marker it was at, but that's all right. How is the puppy, by the way? Shay just got a corgi, corgi puppy. I'm jealous. They're adorable. And then... So, Bonnie, I also have your question here. I know that I addressed it... Um, by email already. <clears throat> um, your question is basically, your dog is already fully e-collar trained through another company, but still highly reactive, highly aggressive, and you want to know if rehab is fully attainable. Um, and I addressed this in the email, right, that there are dogs that can completely overcome it, you know, there are dogs that are also on the flip side of that kind of lifetime management cases, right? I gave the example of my own dog, Sam. When we go to an off leash trail, you know, he's got issues with other, he's so weird, um, neutered adult male dogs. Um, he can have an issue with if they start to posture towards him. So anytime, you know, he's starting to get, um, still and stiff, right? They're still and stiff and there's light and loose. Still and stiff, a dog's probably gonna make a bad decision. Light and loose where they're just all wiggly and everything's all fun. They're gonna make a pretty good decision. So I really have to watch Sam and anytime that he kind of tightens up, does one of these, low level e-collar tap, snap him out of it. But that's my lifetime management with Sam. Some dogs, it's gonna be a little bit heavier and some dogs after enough conditioning and after, you know, just repetitive hard work do improve. Um, 
And like I said, I think what's missing is the key component of what's the, you know, what's that puzzle piece missing in your relationship dynamics. So we're going to talk about that on Thursday as well in our phone consult, figure out what's going on, how we can help you. And I'm really excited for that. Um, and if nobody else has a question, Jen, if you're still there, I'm disappointed. I got my hair did today. Ah. That's right. Didn't notice. Whatever. I just saw Jen yesterday at a meeting. So, all right, guys. Um, I will. There were no questions directly surrounding um, anything that is on my uh, YouTube channel, but I'm going to link up the basics playlist um, just in case anything on there is useful for you guys. Um, Shay. <laughs> Thanks, Jen. <laughs> Annalisa, Annalisa, sorry, Jen, I was thinking about Annalisa the other day when you called me Mushi or whatever you called me. I was thinking of Mushili when we were down in California. Anyways, I burst out laughing. Awesome. Um, what was I saying? So I'm going to link up the basics playlist. Uh, Shay, there, I think I have in there, I know it's on my YouTube channel. I don't know if it's in the basics playlist. Um, beginning clicker training with a puppy. And it, I, I should mention, it's an old video. Uh, instead of using a clicker, I don't use that anymore. I just use the marker of yes. It's a lot easier than trying to fart around with a clicker. And <laughs> were those from you, Jen? Or Annalisa? Um, yeah, a lot easier trying to fart around with a clicker, everything like that. So, uh, go there. You know what? Again, I'm going to do that now. Let me look. I feel like YouTube changed things and now I'm super confused by it. Jen, I know you were having things like that today with YouTube. Playlists. Found it. Don't want that. The foundation. Okay. Here is the playlist, you guys. Awesome. So, need any basic commands? Want to start working kind of a foundational program relationship wise with your dog? Head on over. My webcam's backwards. Head on over there to that YouTube playlist. <laughs> Anyways. I love all you guys. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. Morgan, good luck with um, with Lady. Let me know how it goes, okay? Um, I'm really stoked. Hey, Brandy. I'm really stoked to see how that goes. But remember, I'm going to recap. The biggest thing is to make it be Lady's decision to leave the food. Don't take the food away from her. You want her state of mind around the food to change. That is your key, and that is what so many people miss. Okay? Love you, girl. Shan, hi. I thought you were on the whole time. I've been talking to you. Um, uh, there was something earlier that I wanted you to see, so you can kind of go over the playback if you want. Uh, we talked about crate training puppies, because I know that you just got the corgi. Um, Brandy might be FFFFFF is on here. Love you. Uh, Shay, how are things with the puppy? If you're still on here, let me know. Yeah. Awesome. So you guys, um, speaking of Jen, Laura, she, um, wants to get her feet wet in Facebook live. So I'm going to have her as a guest. Now I'm kind of forcing her to do it. You're welcome, Jen, um, because now I've announced it. So next thing you know, there's going to be an announcement out on my Facebook that I'm going to have a guest speaker. Um, Morgan, I don't think my comment went. <laughs> You're welcome, Jen. I don't think my computer comment went through. Morgan, what comment because I got the comment about the food and wanting to keep her out of there I sort of was at she she's great no accidents since last week I took her to the island had her hotel no one accident oh my god that's awesome 
Uh, how old is she now? I think you got her a couple weeks ago, right? It's probably 10, 12 weeks. I don't even know how old she was when you got her. Um, yeah, I can see Jen's super excited to be my guest star. I love it. Oh, she's five months. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. No, that's fantastic. Um, I would teach her. Hey, Mel. What I would do is I would actually teach her the meaning of the word yes. So that's the first lesson I ever have um, with puppies is you use her daily food. And anytime that, you know, you kind of work it in, in a session. Uh, I do have, I will tag you, I will find the Facebook video and I will tag you in it. I did it with Porter and Bear, um, a retriever and a lab puppy. And what you do is you have their daily food and any behavior at all that they do that you like, you just mark it, you say yes, and you feed them, okay? We spend so much time saying no to our puppies and yelling, no, don't do that. We don't spend enough time teaching them the word the word yes, and you know me, I'm all about balance. We gotta teach both sides of the coin, right? So um, teach her yes, and what you're doing is you're tying uh, the thought in your puppy's head. She sits down and wait. Okay, good. So you got her waiting for food. Okay. So if it comes to other obedience stuff, then yeah, train the yes first. Okay. That's going to come in handy big time. Um, because once a dog can tie kind of a command to food, it's the same idea as clicker training. Um, then whenever she does something that you like and you mark it with yes, then she, uh, she, um, she knows that it was the right decision, the right thing to do. Oh, Morgan's having so many phone issues and now computer problems. Okay, yeah, no worries, Morgan. Uh, it's all there, and if you need anything else, let me know. Uh, Shay, your last comment. Waiting for food is one of the best things that uh, you can do, right? It's a respect thing um, and impulse control above all others. What I would do if she's five months is I would actually start training on her on the place command. Again, that is on uh, the YouTube basics playlist. I just uploaded that the other day. Trainer on the place command. It is going to, because she's a young dog, it's going to prevent 80 to 90% of issues surrounding uh, impulse control. It's going to prevent those. So instead of dealing with all the crud later on, you're actually being proactive in the approach. And a lot of what I do is proactive, right? So my dog, my dog charges the door. People come over. Well, place, right? You train place well enough. You're not having to necessarily punish your dog for doing something because you're beating them to the punch and you're training a command where they have to stay calm even though something's happening, right? I just look at the time. 38 minutes, you guys. All right. Melanie, long time no talk, my dear. All right, so if anybody else has any questions, now would be the time. Um, other than that, the replay will be up and ready to go. Let me just make sure. I did make notes on other people that had stuff, but I might save those for next time. They weren't super pressing, um, anything like that. Okay, guys. Uh, Michelle Sellers, Cascadia Dog Training. If you know somebody that has a dog or has issues with their dog or just wants to get on the right track, share this with them. Let them know that we do this weekly, right? They can come on. They can get free dog training advice. Thank you for all the likes, you guys. That's fantastic. Free dog training advice. Seriously? Yes, right here. I'm in North Vancouver. Um, we serve all of Metro Vancouver. And... Um, Okay, Melanie, my dog is overprotective and charges and barks aggressively at everyone that comes in our yard or to the door. What to do? Uh, Melanie, is your dog crate trained? Answer that for me. And actually, that's funny um, because I just used that as a example. Um, I'm going to get you to do something and I'm going to get you to check back in next week. Okay. So answer. She is crate trained. She, he, sorry. Does 
just waiting on that answer from Mel. Um, and it's a lab, I think. He, golden retriever. Close? Okay, so um, what I want you to do when people come over, oh, I got busted for wearing pajama pants. Ah, oh, the joys of working from home. Anyways, okay, so uh, I talked about this last week as well, and it's been hugely successful for my clients. We're going to do, I want you to, first of all, train the place command. So go to the YouTube link that I have linked up. It's like, how many comments down? Maybe six or seven comments down. I put my uh, foundational playlist on there, okay? Step one. I want you to train the place command. Then once you've got that good and solid, um, what I want you to do when people come over is create place free. Okay. So, hey, Kareen, all the way from Finland. What time is it? Um, what you're going to do is, you know, if you, if you have noticed that people are coming over 15 minutes or so before they get there, I want you to put your dog in the crate. Okay, not to punish your dog, nothing like that. It's so that when people show up, you have your dog in the crate, it does two things. First of all, it says to your guests, yes, I have a dog. Don't worry about it. I don't need to hand you like the guidebook. Here's what I need you to do with my dog. Um, you don't need to say anything, right? Dog's barking in the crate, which it sounds like he might do. I want you to give it an interruption so you can bang on the top of the crate and then just stand there till the dog's calm and then slowly walk away, okay? So that's the first part, you're gonna create your dog. It tells, sorry, it tells your guests that, yes, I have a dog, don't worry about it, and it tells your dog, yeah, there's people here, it's none of your business, like, don't worry about it, they're, you know, they're not here for you, just relax. So, and you're gonna have to practice this over and over, but it's extremely helpful. So we got that part of things, create, right? Once your dog is calm, and don't rush this part. This could take 15 minutes, could take an hour and a half. I don't know how long your company's gonna be there for, but if your company's leaving, um, but your dog's not settled down, just, we wanna set the dog up for success. Don't worry about, you know, oh, I gotta use this as a training experience. You already did. You put your dog in the crate before people came over. It's now gonna become the norm, okay? Say you have company over for the evening, right? So you got your dog in the crate, you've established that. He's now calm. What I want you to do is take him out, put his leash on, take him out and put him on place, okay? This kind of is kind of dipping his feet into the fact that there's people there, still none of his business, right? And when people see you take the dog out of the crate on the leash and put him on place, they're gonna know that you're training and they're probably not gonna mess around with it. And if they ask, then just say, oh yeah, you know, we're training, we're trying to work on things they probably will not, okay? So crate, then place. Once he's calm and relaxed on place, then he can have free time. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Um, crate, place, free. Doesn't come out of the crate till he's calm. Doesn't come off a of place till he's calm. And then when he's free, I'd actually, for the first little while, kind of no touch, no talk, no eye contact, right? Um, Dogs are protective by nature, and we don't want to take that away from them. We don't want to change who they are, but they have to learn kind of when and where it's appropriate to do that, okay? So, you know, when the doorbell rings and no one's home, great, bark away. That's what you're there for, right? But when you guys are home, you have company coming over, you know, we expect you to be polite, buddy. Go in your crate, company's coming over, cool, you relax, come on to place, and then you're free. Okay, I hope that helps. Check back in with me next week. I believe next week's gonna be a Monday. Um, and if anybody else has a question. Oh, you're so welcome, Melanie. Um, did you see the link up, way up where? Anyways, it will be on there. Um, Congratulations on the new baby, by the way. I just remembered right now. That is so exciting. Okay, great. Okay, so check in, train place, use the crate place free. Let me know how it's going. Um, and I look forward to it. You're so welcome.
You are so welcome, Melanie. And I miss you tons. I haven't seen you in years. Um, yeah. All right, everybody. Michelle Sellers, Cascadia Dog Training in North Vancouver. Uh, no problem too big. No puppy too small. Ooh, I just thought of that now. That is good. All right, you guys. I'm getting cheesy now. My cold is getting the better of me. I, yeah, you too, Kareen. Thanks, hon. Hopefully we'll see you at Christmas. Um, yeah, okay. Good night, everybody. Happy Tuesday. If you're in Vancouver, enjoy the rain because I don't think it's going away anytime soon. All right. Ah, Michelle Sellers, Cascadia Dog Training, North Vancouver. <laughs>